I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. This is training, this is development, and I pray that everything the Lord reveals tonight, everyone will receive. It will benefit you. It will move you forward in ministry. And this work will continue to prosper in our hands together in Jesus' name. A good evening before we start. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you because you've chosen us. And we're here so that your word will touch our lives, transform our lives, and make us the leaders we ought to be. We're asking tonight that all the scriptures we're going to read as you lead us, it will fall into fertile heart in Jesus' name. It will bear fruit, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold, and even more in every minister in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. We have been going through a series of studies on leadership. And we're using the letters of the word leadership. We've gone through all the letters of L, E, A, D, E, R, S. Now we come to what letter? H. And uh, we're talking on healing, the prominent gift in New Testament leadership. As you look at the leadership of the New Testament, you will see the part of the administration and the thing that made the early church to grow and grow rapidly is the healing ministry of those people, ministers, that God himself had sent forth and that Jesus himself had anointed and the promise of the Father had been given to them. And they went forth in the power, in the strength of the Lord, and every one of them manifested the healing gift. Healing, the prominent gift in New Testament leadership. We're coming to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world, preach. And when you preach, you're preaching the gospel. And it's the gospel of salvation. It's the gospel that leads people to connection with God and conversion in their lives. And it is the gospel that turns and changes every creature that accepts that gospel. In verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The people that go forth preaching, and they believe the word they are preaching, these signs shall follow them. The people that hear the preaching, and they receive the preaching, and they believe these signs shall follow them. The ministers and the members, the evangelists and the evangelized, and the pastors and the people receiving the word, believing. That's the important thing. The title will not matter. Whether they are apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers, or just a deacons, anyone, a worker, a minister, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Whatever the nation, whatever the community, everyone will go forth in the name of Christ, Christ the Savior, Christ the Healer, Christ the Deliverer, Christ the Redeemer, Christ that has all authority, both on earth and in heaven. The Christ that has a name given, which is above every name. And in that name, they go forth in my name. They cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. 
they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody shout an amen there. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. He sat down because he had finished. He said, it is finished. He sat down because everything was settled. Everything that we need to give the gospel out and to preach effectively, everything is not provided. He sat down. He sat down to supervise. He sat down to watch. He sat down to go through with all the people who are going for. He sat down to support them. He sat down to intercede for them. He sat down to bring all their requests, all their desires before his heavenly father. He sat down in authority because now he's sitting at the right hand of majesty on high. Verse 20, and he went forth and he preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. That's the secret. The Lord walking with them. The Lord will walk with you. The Lord will walk with every one of us. And it doesn't matter again, I say, you're an apostle, or you're just an ambassador of Christ, or you're just a minister, or you're just a pastor of a local church and overseer. It says the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. And everybody said, <laughs> as we look at the message today, and we're looking at healing, the prominent gift in New Testament leadership. We're considering healing tonight from the scriptures, not from the perspective of a sick person or a patient, or even from perspective of a member of the church, or from the perspective of a regular, normal preaching about healing. We're looking at healing in the, in the way that we who are ministers, how do we minister healing? Why are some people not healed? What's the cause of general sickness? Why is it that in a church where we believe that by his stripes we are healed, we still have some challenges of people who are not healed? And then the minister themselves, if we're going to heal the sick, we ourselves must be healthy. You'll be healthy. We must be strong. You'll be strengthened. And everything we need to minister to the sick, let's say, for example, you want to minister to somebody who is sick, and then you look sick yourself, you look tired, you look worn out, and it appears that this man, this woman himself, herself needs help. How are you going to minister effectively? And so the health and the healing will start from you. You will be healthy you will be whole and in that strength and power you go out and reach out to other people then you have the knowledge you know in our church the general idea is once somebody is sick pray for me pray for me pray for me but as we look at the study tonight there are things we tell the sick people and there are things we show them and we reveal to them and they need to get those things in place and then we we'll pray and the Lord will manifest more healing in our, in our membership in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the prominence of healing with commissioned ministers. The prominence of healing with commissioned ministers. Number two, the possibility of hindered healing in common members. And our members, as we pray for them, sometimes you are surprised. They don't, some of them don't get healed immediately. Some of them don't even get healed over a long period of time. Why is the healing hindered? And what can we do to make sure that we get more people healed and the hindrance to their healing is taken away. Number two, the possibility of hindered healing in common members. Number three, the preservation of health. The preservation of health with consistent maintenance. As you study the Old Testament and New Testament, 
and you find those people that were commissioned by the Lord, like Moses, like Joshua, like Caleb, like David, like Elijah, and all the people we can name in the Old Testament, like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then you come to the New Testament, like Paul the Apostle, like Peter, like John, like James. All those people, why it not that they killed them, murdered them? They would have lived very, very long because they maintained their health and they maintained their wholesomeness and they maintained their well-being. The same thing with us, we're going to be preserved. The preservation of health with consistent maintenance. Let's come to point number one. In point number one, the prominence of healing with commissioned ministers. We're coming to Matthew chapter 10. And you will see that from this point on, the Lord Jesus Christ gave the gift of healing and the gift of deliverance unto all his apostles and disciples. Matthew chapter 10, we're reading from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them clean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Ask yourself, he sent them forth to reach one nation, Israel. Is sending us forth to go into all the world. Will he give the tool, the instrument, the gift to those he sent to one nation of a few million? And then he will not give the same gift and tool to those he's sending all over the world with billions of people? He will give us the same thing. Look at verse, uh, verse 6. And as she go, verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as she go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. He wouldn't tell them to do what they couldn't do. He wouldn't then tell them to do what he has not given them the power and the grace to do. Cleanse the lepers. He gave them the power to do that. Raise the dead. He gave them the power to do that. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. That means we don't have to toil or labor or do this or do that before we get that gift. It says freely ye have received and freely give. Why does he give freely? Because he has a work to do. It is his work. And he would have healed the people if he were there. And so as he sent them forth to go and represent him, he must give them the same power that he had so that they can fully represent him and represent him well. Mark chapter 6. We're reading from verse 12. Mark chapter 6, verse 12. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils. They cast out many devils. Why? He commissioned them. Why? He confirmed the word in their mouth. And they anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Healed them. The same success in healing the sick that we find in Christ was also found in them. He healed them. We're coming to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Through thy name. Not through our personality. Not through our shouting. Not through our fasting. Not through our gimmicks and not through our charisma. It's not because of who we are, it's because of who he is. And his name is mighty and powerful. And he said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. These were 70 people and we're not told about their educational level. 
were not told about their level of understanding, but obviously when you have 70 people, there will be of different uh, approaches and different uh, behavior and different uh, understanding, but all the 70, without exception, they were successful. And I want to see all of us here tonight where we will be successful. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He was following up on them, and he was seeing them as they were going, and as they went in this authority, not because of their personality, not because of their stature, not because of their knowledge, they went in his authority. Satan fell as they went, and Satan will fall as you go. Verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Enemies will not stop you. I said enemies will not stop you. As we have announced the March uh, weekend the program, that we are unstoppable. Your own time has now come. I praise God for you. I rejoice because of you. Brother, sister, you are unstoppable. Because he has given you power over all the power of the enemy. And tell me there. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, there are people, they are extra careful, over careful. Over here, something may hurt me. Over there, something may hurt me. In church, nothing will hurt you. At home, nothing will hurt you. With your friends, nothing will hurt you. Even before the enemies, nothing will hurt you in Jesus' name. You will live your life to the full. We're coming to uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Christ has now gone to heaven, and it remains the apostles and disciples, and he had given them the power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. He gave them his name. Look at them using the name. Acts chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 6. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have given I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Any amen? amen? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please understand, it's the name. It's not Peter, it's not his experience, it's not his power, it's the name. It's like if you are given a check. A check of one million. When I give that check to Apostle Peter, and he goes to the bank, he'll catch the check. When I give that check to Philip, and Philip is not an, 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 an apostle, he will go to the, to the bank, it's what is written on the check, and the person holding the check, and the check might be given to you, where are you? And when he gives you that check, you go to the bank, will they say, you don't look like somebody qualified to have a check of one million. Will they say that? It's not what you look like. And it is not who you are. It is the name of Jesus. As Peter used that name, you will use that name. And it says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, leaping up stood, and he walked, and he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and hear, where I know, yea, 
the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. We will see your converts. We will see the people your prayer will touch. You can pray directly. You can pray on the phone. Mention the name of Jesus. You will be healed. We are coming to Acts chapter 4. Look at the result of that healing. That healing gave them progress and also gave them uh, um, movement forward in chapter 4 verse 4. Because of that healing of be each many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. When people are healed miraculously, when people are healed suddenly, when people are healed powerfully, it makes many hearts to open up and to receive the gospel and the gift of healing and the ministry of healing will help us in evangelizing uh, the world. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 14, and the and believers were the more added to the Lord, more teachers, both of men and women. You see that? When the gift of healing is not preaching, it brings many people to open up their hearts and to come to the Lord. In so much, verse 15, that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. What happened to them? And they were healed, everyone. That's why the church, the early church grew. That's why the church of the New Testament, that's how they grew rapidly. Look at chapter 8 of Acts, Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord, without anybody rejecting, anybody disregarding the message, anybody refusing the message, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Here was Philip, he wasn't an apostle, and yet because he had the name, the same name that you have, and that name will never lose its power. And whether it is Peter or it is Philip, that name will work wonders in Jesus' name. Whether it is that brother or that sister, as you believe, and when you believe, that name will work wonders in Jesus' name. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many. Only Philip, no supporter, no helper. Unclean spirits came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Our, not, our time has now come. It will happen through us and through every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. But when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Eventually, um, Paul also came along and as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, he also was used mightily. But as we look at Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 15, verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round the bow unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ through mighty signs 
and wonders. The same power that worked with Peter, worked with Paul. That same power worked with Philip. That same power went with all the people that went. And Christ the Lord confirmed their messages, their words, were signs following. I come to point number two. The possibility of hindered healing in common members. Uh, you might have seen members of a church in your own local church. You prayed for them and they are not healed. And then you pray again and they are not healed. I discover that we keep on praying. We never check up the why. Why is this so on the side of the minister? Why is this so on the side of the member? Because we have to consider both the member and the minister. If you pray and there's no result, if you pray and there is no healing, if you pray and there's no deliverance, you check on the side of the minister. What did I do wrong? What did I say right? How did I pray? What was my expectation? And what was I thinking would happen when I prayed? When you check up yourself, you also check up on the side of the member, or on the side of anybody, member of community that you are praying for. Why were they not healed either gradually or instantaneously? Why were they not healed effectively? Let's come to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. We're reading from verse 19. In verse 19, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Many of us don't ask that kind of question. Why did I pray for somebody and the person was not healed? Why did I, you know, mention the name of Jesus and nothing happened? Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, ministers, disciples that he had commissioned, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. It shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's on the side of the minister. You must check up. Why were they not healed? Why are they not getting healed? On the side of the minister. Now on the side of the members. We're coming to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 6. But let him ask in faith. When we call a minister to come and pray for us, do we have faith? Do we believe if my local pastor prays for me, I will get well? I might look him beyond that local pastor. I'm still looking beyond to somebody far away there. I might look him beyond Philip, and I say until Peter comes. I might look him beyond Timothy, and I say until Paul himself comes. I don't think anything will happen. On the side of the members, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, because for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But for let not that man not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. As we look at this now, please understand. When I use the words I use, it's uh, sometimes unbelievable. When I say God gives me or the Lord gives me the words sometimes. And they just come and rapidly I write them down. And there are times I will not want to use what I call, what we call alliteration. I will not want to, because I will say this one, there's no way I can get all these verses. But God gives them, and he gives them not because of me, but because of you. To feed you, and to lift you up, and to enlighten you, and to make you remember. So, we're going to go through now, why is it some people are sick, 
I will pray and pray and pray and they are not healed and we need to tell them that have you checked up this have you checked up this and as they check up the Lord will perform the healing in Jesus name now we're going to use the letters of the word leadership lawlessness is the first thing lawlessness the person who abandons the word of God abandons the law of God and we pray and pray and pray and it appears there is no answer and we're not checking up on them they keep on in that, they keep on in that life of lawlessness and we keep on praying look at Micah chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 12 and 13 Micah chapter 6 verse 12 verse 13 for the rich men thereof are full of violence and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies and that their tongue is deceitful in their mouth therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee and in making thee desolate because of thy sins there are times people are lawless and they are not obeying the word of God and we can easily point it out to them brother or sister look at this look at that and once they correct that that name we can pray and the Lord will answer in the early church I just read to you now Acts of the Apostle chapter 5 and in Acts chapter 5 the shadow of Peter was healing the sick healing outsiders outsiders to the church just on the street they bring them the shadow of Peter will fall on them and they are healed in that same chapter 5 Ananias and Sapphira brought an offering and Peter asked is this all and he said that is all why have you lied to the Holy Ghost when it was there was it not yours lawlessness while other people are getting healed even through the shadow of Peter this man instead of getting well he died I pray you will not die in lawlessness if there is Egyptian entanglement, Egyptian entanglement, you see the Lord had said, I will not bring any of these diseases of Egypt upon the children of Israel. But you see, because they took that for granted and they went into the same character, the same behavior with the Egyptians, look at what came on them. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter uh, 29, verse 28. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 28. The Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and casted them into another land as it is this day. Why? Why will God do that? Because he had promised the people, I will not bring any of these things upon you. I've given you the land of promise. Chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And here we're reading from verse 58. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 28 verse 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that, it, that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, that means terrible, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance, and so sicknesses and of long continuance the Lord who had promised them I will not bring any of these uh, plagues upon you that I brought upon the Egyptians I am the Lord that healeth thee but now if they didn't diligently hearken to the words of the Lord and they lived and behaved like the Egyptians no choice then the plagues of Egypt will come upon them. L for lawlessness. E for Egyptian entanglement. 
A for anger. We're coming to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 26. In Second Chronicles chapter 26, we're reading from verse 16. Second Chronicles chapter 26, reading from verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. This is a king, a king in Israel. Even the common people in Israel should have healing from the Lord, deliverance from the Lord. But this one now, when he was stronger, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into uh, the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him and with him first core priests of the Lord that were valiant men. They were valiant men that could challenge the king. We learned, um, you know, on Sunday about the Otrephes, and there was nobody in that local church that could challenge the Otrephes. He was just a man that was domineering, and nobody could say, hey, this is not right. This is not good. This is not what we heard from the headquarters. He was just a man of his own mind. And but over here, valiant men challenged this king. And it was to Uzziah in verse 18, the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priest, your usurping authority. And you're trying to do uh, something where God has not appointed you uh, because he has appointed the sons of Aaron to do this that are come, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trans has transpired, neither shall each be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then... Uzziah was somebody there tell me was a normal word for wrath anger he was angry and at the incense in his hand to burn incense and while he was wroth while he was angry with the priests angry with the preachers angry with the teachers of the word of God while he was angry with the priests the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold, it was leprous in his forehead and they thrust him out from this ye himself hasted also to go out because somebody there tell me the Lord had smitten him. And so we learn anger against the word, anger against the messengers of God can make people not to have the healing because God is chastising them. D is desecration. Desecration. There are people that desecrate holy things and sacred things and because of that desecration sickness infirmity comes upon them we're coming to for samuel i'm reading from chapter 5 for samuel chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 6 for samuel chapter 5 we're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them <coughs> of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod, and the coast thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us. They recognize, they recognize the hand of the Lord was heavy on them because they desecrated the ark of God. 
he took that ark to their shrine and God was not happy with that so indignation came and sickness came upon them look at verse 9 and it was so that after they had carried it about the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction and he smote the men of the city both small and great and they had emeralds in their secret parts. We're coming to chapter 6 of so 1 Samuel. Look at chapter 6, verse 6. Chapter 6, verse 6. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts? They were now telling themselves, why don't we, you know, give the ark to where it belongs? And don't uh, continue desecrating the ark of the Lord. Why do we harden our hearts? Don't you know already the destruction, the disease, the devastation coming upon us? Look at verse 19. In verse 19, and he smote the men of the Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Even he smote the people, he smote the people, 50,000 and three score and ten men. And the people lamented because the Lord had smitten many of the people with great slaughter. So we understand that things that make God not to answer prayer to be healed. If there's lawlessness in somebody's life. I don't care for the law of God. I don't care for the commandment. Of, just pray for me. I want to be healed. I may be doing this and it's wrong. I may be doing that and it's wrong. But you don't worry about that. Just pray for me. Pray for me. Not only prayer. Correct the lawlessness. Correct the Egyptian entanglements. If you are entangled in the habit and the character of the Egyptians, correct that and healing will come. I said healing will come. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 1. It is reported commonly among you, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. The sin of the Egyptians, the sin and the waywardness of the people of the world is reported commonly among you, Corinthians, that there is fornication among you, such fornication as is not so much as named as among the Gentiles, that one should take, one should have his father's wife. Think about that. Here was a church. And a member there was doing something that even the world will not do. And this fellow went into evil, went into the parliament that even the people of the world will shrink from, that they will not do. And he had popped up. And I'm not rather mourned that he which has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, I've, I've judged already as though I were present concerning him that has so done this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, look at this, look at this, to, de to deliver such a man, such a one, unto Satan, for what? For the destruction of the flesh. That's how sickness comes. If somebody is practicing immorality, adultery, fornication, and a terrible defilement that even goes beyond the world, excessive evil, Egyptian entanglement, it says, deliver him to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. When the pain comes, when the affliction comes, and we pray, pray, and pray, and there's no healing, then you will recollect, is it because of this? Is it because of this? And when he repents, the Lord will forgive, and the Lord will heal. We've talk uh, we talked of lawlessness. We've talked of Egyptian entanglement. We've talked of anger. We've talked on desecration. And now another e, excessive evil. Excessive evil. 
evil even in moderate form is bad enough but when somebody goes on and goes on on church and there's excessive evil that brings destruction and if there's anybody in our church you know he calls himself a member and then it's evil and it goes beyond and nobody can convince him nobody can persuade him nobody can talk to him when he becomes sick pray for me pray for me if that excessive evil is there and it is not corrected the, the god will not answer the prayer look at ecclesiastes chapter 7 ecclesiastes chapter 7 I'm reading from verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, reading from verse 17. Be not overmuch wicked. To be wicked, that's bad enough. To be wicked, that attracts the judgment of God, but now excessive. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Why are you excessively evil? Do you want to die before your time? Why don't you repent and turn around and do that which is right? I pray God will give us wisdom. And so when we're praying and praying and praying, and then somebody is not healed, then they will say there's no power in our local church. My friend, there's power there. Once the name of Jesus is there, there is power. Once the Holy Ghost is there, there is power. Instead of putting all the blame on the local pastor, on the local minister, let's check ourselves as members that we are not the people guilty of lawlessness, guilty of Egyptian entanglement, guilty of anger, guilty of desecration, guilty of excessive evil, guilty of our recklessness recklessness the people who are reckless look at um, first corinthians chapter 11. in first corinthians chapter 11 we're reading here from verse 29. first corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 29. for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself he's talking to church members He's talking to people who are in the church and the Lord's Supper is going to take place and they, you know, they mess up their lives outside and they're not going to repent. They're not going to cleanse themselves. We announce the Lord's Supper before time so that people can examine themselves and they can check up themselves and look at their lives and see whether it's appropriate for them or not. But there are some reckless people. There are some people, they don't care for anything. You can announce, you can read the scriptures, can do whatever. What they have been doing is what they'll continue doing. They remain reckless. And it says in, verse, in that verse 29, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Corinthians, for this cause, Christians, many are weak, and sickly among you, and many sleep, and many die. Why is it a church that Paul the Apostle was interested in? A church that was still under the leadership of Paul the Apostle. He said you may have a thousand, ten thousand teachers, but you have just one father. Because in the gospel, I brought you to the Lord. You are begotten to the Lord. A church that Paul the Apostle was writing to and overseeing, yet it says that many of them were weak, and many were sickly, and many of them slept. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When you are praying for people, check up on them. Judge yourself. Examine yourself. We're going to pray. Is there anything in your life? Is there anything in your character? Is there anything in your behavior? Is there anything in your attitude as a member in our church and as a professed believer, child of God? Is there anything in your life that will hinder the prayer we're praying? You're weak and sickly in a church like this where the power of God is available. Check up yourself. That's what we need to tell them. And if they find that in the past they've been reckless, and you'd be uncaring, 
and they didn't care whatever the word of God taught, then they repent, and then the Lord will heal them. I thought you'd say, good, good, amen. Yes, that's sin. When there's sin in the life, and the people are just praying, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, you know, even if you are going to fast, fast for me. Do everything you can do. I need to be healed. I want to be healed. I, don't, I cannot die like this. And we say that the name of Jesus has power. So, Pastor, okay, if you cannot handle it, uh, refer me to the group, Pastor. If you cannot handle it, refer me to the state of us here. If you cannot uh, do it, refer me to the general superintendent. Pray, 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 pray. But what about the sin in the life of the people? Secret sin, habitual sin, continual sinning, willful sin in the lives of the people. Look at John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. These are the very words of Jesus. The power is always there to heal with Jesus. But look at what he said in John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. And it was Jesus that healed the man. And he said, Behold, thou art made whole. Look at this, look at this. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man had been sick, impotent, for 38 years. And now he was healed by the Lord Jesus. And Jesus said, Ah, don't take life for granted. Don't take grace for granted. Don't take healing power for granted. Don't take the Holy Ghost for granted. Don't take the promises of God for granted. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come on thee. Now, H, that's hypocrisy. H, hypocrisy. We're coming to Job chapter 36, and we're reading from verse 13. Job chapter 36. We're reading from verse 13. In verse 13, but the hypocrites in heart, hypocrites, they cry not when he bindeth them. The hypocrite in heart, the hypocrites, judgment upon themselves, they cry not when he bindeth them. Remember Jonah? He was a hypocrite. He was called a prophet, but he, was, he will not do the work of a prophet. And the Lord sent him to Nineveh. And he went the other direction. And when he got to that, he saw a sheep, and then he laid that down there, and he slept. And there was a storm. The Bible says, look at Jonah chapter 1, Jonah chapter 1. We're looking at what happened to Jonah. And we're seeing that this is the very hand of God. Jonah chapter 1 verse 4. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. There are people that think every bad thing that happens is coming from Satan. They bind Satan, they bind demons, nothing happens. Satan go out, nothing happens. Check off from Jonah. Are you in the right place? Are you doing the right thing? Are you going the right direction? Or are you running away from God? And all the binding will not do anything until we remind Jonah that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So it's not just pray, pray, pray. Let's check up on the people. And let's tell Jonah, why did you do this? And the mariners, they rode and they did everything they could do. The storm was still there. And Jonah said, Jonah could have knelt down there. And Jonah could have said, Lord, have mercy on me. I know I'm the cause of this storm. I know I'm the cause of this trouble. I know you answer prayer. I know your promises. I will do what you have called me to do. No, you wouldn't say that. So cast me out into the sea. Those people tried and tried. Like many of us, that will pray and pray. And we get people to fast and pray. And nothing happens. I pray for the wiser in Jesus' name. Eventually, when they cast him out like that, 
Look at Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. I said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Very simple. I cried by reason of my affliction. I know this is the hand of God. And I know it's because I'm hypocritical. I'm answering the name of a prophet. I'm not doing the work of the prophet. And then he goes on to say, in that same uh, chapter, chapter 2, I'm reading here now from verse 7. It says in verse 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. It's not just prayer, prayer, prayer. Uh, transfer me to the pastor. Transfer me to the GS. Remember the Lord and what he had commanded you. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee. That's repentance. I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which that I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Look at the result. And the, and the Lord speak unto the fish. And it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. And now the word of God came to him saying, Jonah, that message I gave you, that errand I sent you right now, and go to Nineveh, and now he went. It's very clear. If we're hypocritical, and something has happened, and we are not taking care of that thing, it hinders prayer. I is immorality. Immorality. We're coming to Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 12 second samuel chapter 12 we're reading here from verse 15 in second samuel chapter 12 reading from verse 15 look at what the word of god is saying so that god will give us wisdom the lord will give you wisdom wisdom in prayer you know, somebody, somebody say, pray for me, Pastor. I say, let's talk. No, I don't have time for talking. Pray for me. I need to ask you some questions before we pray. No, Pastor, pray for me. I need to check up on this, this and that. No, Pastor, don't check up anything. Just pray for me. We must check up. Because, you see, it might be because of lawlessness. It might be because of entanglement with Egyptian behavior. It might be because of anger. It might be because of desecration. It might be because of excessive evil in your life. It might be because of recklessness. You are reckless. You just go here and there. Do whatever you want without thinking of what does God require. It might be because of sin, hidden sin, because of hypocrisy. Because of immorality. In Second Samuel, I'm reading from chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 15. In verse 15, And Nathan departed unto his house, And the Lord struck the child, The Lord struck the child, The Lord struck the child, That Raya's wife bear unto David, And it was very sick. That's not Satan. This is God. And David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of, the, of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass... On the seventh day, what happened? The child died because of that immorality. In First Corinthians chapter 10, First Corinthians chapter 10, we're reading from verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, First Corinthians chapter 10, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. He brought them out of Egypt. He wanted to give them the promised land, leading them to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And yet with many of them, 
God was not well pleased and he overthrew them in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed fornication and fed in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and they were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happened unto them. For example, and they are reaching power admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. And now, P is because of pride. Because of pride. Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Reading from verse 21. Acts, chapter 12, verse 21. And upon his set day, Herod arranged a royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because the angel of the Lord smote him, because, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up a ghost. And so we learn that sin in general, from lawlessness to Egyptian entanglement to anger, anger against the message of God, anger against the messengers of God, anger against the priests and the pastors sent to us by God. And because of desecration, because of excessive evil, because of recklessness, I'll go there, I'll be there, I'm a worker, I'm a leader, doesn't matter what I do, and they are reckless in their behavior because of sin, because of hypocrisy, because of immorality, because of pride. These people's healings and long life, they were hindered. So as we pray for people, let's check up, and as we check up, the Lord will give the people a heart to repent in Jesus' name. And when they repent, the Lord will touch them, and the Lord will heal them in Jesus' name. We we'll learn something tonight. That our method of prayer, our hurry to pray, our impatience in prayer doesn't work. We check up from the people after you have prayed and there's no answer and there's no result, good result. Check up on them. Why is the prayer not answered? And as they correct those things and repent and turn to the Lord, the Lord will answer our prayer for them in Jesus' name. And the church said, and the workers said, and our minister leader said, yeah. Now there's something. Point number three, this is very important. How do we preserve our health? How do I preserve my health? How do you preserve your health? How do we remain strong, healthy? That, yes, we know we pray, and that's the problem. We think it's just pray, pray, pray. If I'm going to be healthy, Let's look at what the Word of God is saying. Point number three, the preservation of health with consistent maintenance. Consistent maintenance. I come to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 58. Reading from verse 6. In verse 6, it says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? 
to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that she break every yoke, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou, thou bring the poor that are cast out to thine house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and thou, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Look at verse 8. Then, if you do that, then, if you look at verses 6 and 7, and you obey that, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Thine health shall spring up speedily. That amen is too low. Thine health, our health, my health, will spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear watch. What do we call that? That's liberality. Liberality. You're liberal. You give to the poor. You close the naked without too much prayer. Yes, we still pray. But with that liberality, it says, your health will spring forth. Now, he is eating well. I'm surprised about that myself. That our health will be what it ought to be when we don't eat junk. When we don't eat just whatever. Something is going bad, give it to me. In the name of Jesus, then I swallow. Hmm. We'll see the repercussion in a few weeks, a few months. And if we do that regularly, we destroy ourselves. Acts of the Apostles chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 33. And while the day was coming on, Peter, be, Paul besought them all to take meat, take food, eat, saying, this day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, have been taking nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some food, to take some meat. Look at this, for this is for your health. We pray, yes, we eat well. This is for your health. For there shall not an air fall from the head of any of you. Amen. A is acknowledgement. Acknowledge the Lord. That brings health anywhere you're going. Anything you're doing, acknowledge the Lord. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord. With all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. I'm grateful to God is the one that made me to have this, is the one that prospered me, is the one that has done everything in my life. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Then it says, be not wise in thine own conceit, Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. When you acknowledge the Lord, you're going here, you acknowledge the Lord, people praise you, they appreciate you, you acknowledge the Lord, you remain healthy. D is dedication. We're looking at Exodus. Exodus chapter 23, dedication. In Exodus chapter 23, I read from verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of my days I will fulfill. 
the number of my days he will fulfill. That, that brings help. That brings help. And the Lord said, once you are dedicated, I will not allow all these uh, things to come upon you. I will take care of you. God will take care of you. I said, God will take care of you. He is exercise. Exercise. You know, the children of Israel, although they were not going to gym, and doing any gymnastic thing, they were walking every time. And as they were walking every time, the blood circulation was all right. And all their joints, were, everything was all right with them because they did things that brought exercise every day in their lives. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 8. First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 8, for bodily exercise profited little. What that means is that here on earth, bodily exercise is profitable. For you to keep active and to keep healthy and to keep everything, your blood will not clutch, nothing bad will happen to you. Exercise is very important. Of course, godliness is more important. Holiness is more important. That gets us ready for heaven. But here on earth, bodily exercise profited little. I pray we'll exercise when we ought to exercise. I said we'll exercise when we ought to exercise. You jump into the car every time and then you come out, then you go into air conditioned office and then from air conditioned office you go back to the car and every time car, car and you know and everything, even you know jets and all that exercise will help. That's part of what keeps us healthy and sound. You'll be healthy. You'll be sound. Well, I don't have time to read our references, but let me go to the next one. Resting. R is for resting. There are times we need to rest. And there are people that, that they, you know, they, they are working all the time. There's no time for them to rest. They don't take any break to rest. From morning to evening, from day to day, from week to week, and from month to month, all throughout the year, work, work, work. And they say, you know, that's me. I'm a worker and I love work. Huh. It will backfire. There are times we need to rest. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 25. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you a Paphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye have heard, ye had heard that he had been sick. Why was he sick? For indeed, he was sick nice unto death. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have, I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again ye may rejoice and that I may be less sorrowful receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation look at this now because for the work of Christ he was nice unto death because for the work of Christ, it was nice unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service towards me. It wasn't resting at all. We must take time to rest, work and rest, work and rest. You'll be healthy in Jesus' name. S is for spirituality. Spirituality. We're looking at Third John, Third John, and I'm reading from verse two there. Third John. We're reading from verse two. Spirituality. We need to be spiritual and remain healthy. Verse two, beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. You'll prosper. And be in health, you'll be in health. 
even as thy soul prospers, H is holiness. Holiness. Somebody help me shout holiness there. Look at Second Kings chapter twenty. Second Kings chapter twenty. Holiness supports health. Holiness builds health. In Second Kings chapter twenty, here we're reading from verse one. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked with thee in truth and with a perfect heart. That's holiness. And have done that which is good in thy sight. That's holiness. And Ezekiel wept so. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days. I will add unto thy days. The Lord will prolong your life. I is intercession. I is intercession. Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, reading from verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Those who have hurt him, those who had accused him, those who had slandered him, and those who had criticized him. When Job interceded and prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. P is peace. God will give you peace. A peaceful heart will be healthy. No turmoil, no confusion, no harassment, no worry, no anxiety. You are peaceful. You'll be healthy in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them and reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. You'll be peaceful in your heart. Your family will be peaceful. Your heart will be peaceful. The peace will generate much health in your body. And you're happy. And you're joyful all the time. Look, look at this verse before we close. Look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. I'm waiting for you. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Are you there? I said, are you there? Okay, read it out if you are there. One, two, three, go. That's enough. A merry heart does good like medicine. There are people, when they want to sleep at night, they listen to bad news. They read bad news. And they access, you know, they, don't, they need to have time all through the day to look at their phone. And at the end of the day, before they go to sleep, they, you know, look at their phones and they read all those things. And those who are on WhatsApp, they see all those uh, pictures of violence and this and that. And they wonder, why are people doing this? Why are people like this? And they go to sleep like that. The following night again, you know, they, they're like that. But a person always has good news before he sleeps. And the promises of God before he sleeps. And it's a merry person. His heart is merry. His heart is joyful. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. 
you wake up in the morning, you read the Bible, you see the promises of God. You are a happy man. Anybody does something to you, you don't you have that in your mind, you smile it away. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Your life will be prolonged. My life will be prolonged. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, He shall cover me with His feathers. And under His wings will I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler and thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies in the by the day nor for the pestilence that coronavirus will not catch you not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Where are you? It will not come near you. I say, where are you? It will not come near you. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. In your house, there shall no evil befall you. On the road, there shall no accident before you. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and Adam, the young lion and the dragon. Shall thou trample under thy feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. What long life? What long life? What long life? Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? The Lord is talking about you. The Lord is talking to you. Rise up and tell the Lord, I accept that. I believe that. I receive that. It is mine. Long life will be yours in Jesus' name. Healing the prominent gift in New Testament leadership. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. I have everything you have brought unto me.